Yeah. Let me start that again. Huh? Okay, I'll cut this out. But, um, all right, let's continue on. Tell us about Morris. Okay. Uh, Morris was a, a very big parrot that uh, belonged to Eric's grandmother, Rose. And uh, he, he had a huge cage. That, uh, like, when I say huge, I mean like this big, you know. Big, tall enough. He'd been, he had never been out of it. And he, he lived in this cage forever. And uh, he, uh, he was at, I don't know why he was at Hurtwood Edge, but he was there uh, in, the, in the front room, sitting in the very back of the front room. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to stay at Hurtwood by myself. And Eric said, go ahead. I asked him, and he said, yeah, you can stay here. And he said, make yourself at home. You know, look all around. I did, too. I went, you know, I <laughs> was looking all over the place. But, uh... uh uh, Morris was sitting in there, and I got back there, and he, and he would go, "Where's Eric? <laughs> Where's Eric?" And on, the, on his fan magazine, I, I really thought that was that's where they got the name of of that magazine from was Morris, but uh, that's what he said. Where's Eric? You know, and he was a big he was a big parrot, and uh, Eric said he had never been out of that cage. And I figured it was time to liberate him, you know, and uh, I went on, I opened up the thing and he came walking up and poked his head out like this, you know. I'm a bird guy, all right? <laughs> and poked his head out and he's looking all around and he crawled out and pulled himself up on top of the, top of the cage, you know, and he was looking like, I had a huge roar and fire going at the other end of the living room, you see. And the fireplace was a great big fireplace. The mantle was like six feet up. Uh, uh, there's a photograph with all of you sitting in front of it. Right yeah, there's a photograph of all of us sitting in front of this big thing. But uh, he was up on top of the thing and I was getting ready to put my hand under here and, and let him get up on my, on my hand. And spread his wings out like this, and he was tattered. I mean, he was, he, I mean, he didn't, he didn't have a whole lot of feathers. <laughs> and, uh, he, he, he stretched them out there, and it, <laughs> it looked like he'd been out at sea, you know, for a long time. <laughs> and uh, he stretched them out like this, and, and all of a sudden he was, <laughs> he just took off like that. And he, he glided across the living room, and I went, oh, no! <laughs> and he glided across the living room, straight into the fireplace, and straight through the fire, behind the fire. <laughs> and I went, oh, no! What's going on? What can I do about this? Well, he was sitting there and back like that, and he was going, where's Eric? <laughs> behind the fire. But... Because it, uh, the fire was in the middle of the fireplace. So he's back here like it, and he's smoking. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. And so I went over here to the edge of the fireplace and I uh, coaxed him out. And he came out and he still had smoked him and he singed his feathers and stuff. He was, a, he was all right. He survived, you know. But uh, he didn't get burned. But he, I, I got him back into the cage and, and nobody ever said anything about it. You didn't tell Eric? Yeah, yeah, but nobody ever said. I mean, said he must have known. Yeah, well, I mean, it was more funny than pitiful, you know. I mean, <laughs> he feel this pair gliding across the thing, but he didn't land in the fire. He went through the fire. You got to take into account the fireplace was like you know five feet deep, you know. Right. Okay. One, well, this is a massive fireplace. And, Jeez. But. Oh, that's that's the story of Morris. I never did see him after that. I think um, uh, uh, Rose took him back to the house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think she took him back to the house. We have to keep Bobby away from live things. <laughs> no. I'm good with my birds and all of my animals. I'm. I'm I'm good with all that, you know, horses and everything. 
Yeah, you know, I can break horses and. Well, how did you learn how to break horses? My my friend Bob Dant. Oh. And and, uh, and then just being around him all my life, and I've seen it happen before. But to gentle break a uh, a horse, uh, I, I I was there. I, I saved my little buckskin Poco when she was born. Uh, Pearl was a white Appaloosa, and but she never accepted her babies. And I was there, and when she stood up and out that little old thing came, and she looked like her, her great big eyes and long eyelashes. She looked like Bambi, you know. <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was a cotton ball sky in Eagleville, Tennessee. I was out in the middle of a pasture. Pearl walked away from the baby. I went over and picked her, cleaned all of, all of her face off and everything. And she looked up at me like that and blinked her eye. And it, it was like, Mama! <laughs> I got her cleaned off, picked her up and got over to her mama and stuck her up under there and got her to nursing and everything. And uh, yeah, that was the first baby Pearl had, had accepted. And uh, she was like a puppy dog after that. E everywhere I went, there she was. You know, Poco was there everywhere I went. She was beautiful. She was buckskin and had uh, white spots about that big on her, on her hindquarters. Mm -hmm. And a real smart horse. And I broke, gentle broke Pearl. Uh, when she was before Poco was born, so Pearl was green broke, and I, and I gentle broke her, and uh, ride her with no nothing, you know, no bridle or nothing. And uh, uh, when Poco was born, she saw me working her mama, and then when she got big enough, you know, like just as your halter, and yeah, she just kind of. Okay, and she stuck her head in, <laughs> and, and it's like so she got she was really used to everything and being handled every day, and uh, just touched her whole body. And then when she got big enough that I could put a saddle on her, uh, she'd seen the saddle a bunch of, every day, you know, and I sort of let her sniff it and everything, and put it up on her. She shook a little bit. I tightened it up. And I said, "I'm coming on up." <laughs> I got up on her. Like that, and she just kind of bowed up like this, you know, and then she went, boom, 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 like a rabbit. You know, bam, bam, bam. She didn't, she didn't rodeo or anything. She bounced like a rabbit about three or four times, and that was it. And then it was smooth sailing that forever after that. Well, when you were in Mississippi, didn't you have a, a lot of horses? Yeah, yeah, I had to call them all down. It started out with about 56, and then... Oh. Got it down to twenty something, and then how did you end up with so many horses? Uh, my ex had a bunch of horses in, uh -huh. in several different farms, and um, they all wound up there at one point, and it was just entirely too many. And I'm I got it down to seven at the end of the day, and uh, I had I, I had a great uh, uh, paint Echo boy. He he was a fine horse. I'm telling you right now, he'd stop on a dime, you know. Turn so do you do, uh, were you doing uh, barrel racing and stuff like that? I used to, you know, I used to, that, I, I love barrel racing, flag racing, but that was the only thing I did. I didn't do that, I didn't go rodeoing and bucking and riding no bulls and nothing stupid <laughs> like that. No, hell no, I'm more... You know. <laughs> Every bull rider I knew got an arm tore off or something like oh, that. Oh, hell. I'm, <laughs> and, uh, and they're all small guys about my size. You and know. crazy. Yeah, they're, crazy. And, they're, and they're fearless, you know. i tell you the ones that are the, uh, is the clowns. The clowns are the ones <laughs> at a rodeo. No, yeah. they save everybody's ass. Yeah, you know, I've they're seen. the very, they're really responsible for keeping these crazy dudes alive, you know. Sorry, but. <laughs> because when, I, when the bull finally gets him off, man, for a while he wants to go kill him, you know. <laughs> Just the mention of clowns. Yeah, it's man. funny. Clowns are real important. <laughs> and I'll walk to life. I will try not to laugh. No, I'm sorry. We, I don't know what's having this candid conversation about. <laughs>
Lord, I don't know what, but it's just a lot of fun. I'm, you know, I'm glad everybody likes it. All That's this an stuff. awesome painting that you've got. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, thank you. I, I mean, you, you that. turned. I didn't know what was going to happen. You turned it. that nothing thing into something quite beautiful. Yeah, it's like I'm possessed. You know, it's like I'm taken over. And it's all about these colors and this blending of the, this thing and making all this kind of just happen in it. It's a, all, it has emotion. I believe that when it's done with emotion, it ev evokes that. It, it uh, well, puts that forth, you know. I, I know it. I know that it does, you know. If something is real sedate and you and you, that's what goes down, you know, that's what's going to be projected. It's, it's like, uh, uh, un, unlike a mirror at all, you know, a mirror of, of my uh, creative mind, you know. It's a mirror image that I saw, you know. Um, I wasn't looking for it, but I saw it. And so this is how it all projects, you know. And so I, when you look at the water, you can see that it has mo movement, you know, and you can see that there's light and you can see that it's alive, you know.